mindset. If you're a consultant starting out your own business, maybe been going a little while, you hear everybody talking about mindset in business. Why is it so important, particularly as a startup? That's what we're going to be talking about this week. So we all hear about mindset all the time. It's something that all the gurus and coaches out there are talking about. But what is it? Why is it important? And what happens when you get it wrong? I'm talking today with Ryan Gray from Argonix. And he was just telling me how, shall I do a spoiler alert? Mindset is really important because you made your first million in your 20s and then blew it. <laughs> so what happened there, Ryan? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I started a fairly successful uh, web design company uh, back in 2004. And that has continued through uh, all like all the way through for the last 17 years in one form or another. Uh, but I didn't make my first million from that web design company, which you know at the time, you know all you had to do was have a website, put it on uh, a couple of directories, and you were ahead of the curve. Uh, and so Google would index you and you'd get a ton of of new business, which is you know it was phenomenal for, for the time. Uh, but what I found was, I wasn't keeping any of the money that I was actually making. And so I was I was <laughs> growing and spending it on, spending, on, cars, I was spending it on staff, I was spending it on, on myself, yes, um, on, on experiences. I was expending, yeah, I, I was spending it pretty much wherever you know I could. I just had zero mindset around keeping money. I could make it for sure, but trying to actually keep it, that was a whole other scenario. And and business was demanding at the time. And so, you know the like and as you know growth is expensive so i was reinvesting back into the business uh, that that was a large portion of it but i wasn't i guess doing that in a way that was profitable and so it really took me until my early 30s to figure out what you know what like there's something broken and and i think it's with me i don't think it's with my marketing skill or my business skill or or that kind of thing i actually think it's it's internal and so i got a coach and he said he was a performance coach and he said, hey, look, you know, you really need to work on your, your money mindset. And he introduced me to a book uh, by T. Half Ecker called Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. And I realized that I had a money thermostat, um, sort of like, you know, when you when you open a window and the, the, the thermostat is set at a certain level, um, it'll kick in and, and increase the, uh, you know, the temperature to meet the changing conditions. And so my, my money thermostat at a personal level was set very, very low. And so if I made money, so I'd spend cool, it, I'd it? lose it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so I had to work on that. And yeah, there were, there were a lot of interesting things that, uh, that I had to do or tried and tested uh, a lot of, you know, affirmations I tried that didn't work. Um, you know, I tried, you know, all sorts of, you know, uh, you know, the secret, you know, that, that sort of thing that didn't work. Um, you know, and, I'll, and so I eventually found that um, I was lying to myself through these affirmations, through, um, you know, a lot of, um, you know, activities, I guess, that, that were popular at, at the time. Uh, and the thing that I did find that worked, though, was uh, changing it from, you know, I'm rich, I'm wealthy, I'm, you know, I'm good at money because I clearly wasn't. Um, it was a case of, okay, great. I will, I will get good at money. I will uh, become wealthy. I will provide for my family consistently and at a level. Uh, so it was, it was a, a case of taking it from a, a, an untruth to a truth, from, from a lie to something that, you know, I could actually genuinely deep down grab onto and go, do you know what? This is actually real. And I won't stop until, you know, I, I am good with money. So yeah, that's, that, that's been a bit of my experience around the, the money journey. Wow. That's amazing. So some people might be watching this and going, well, okay, you know, it's affirmations and so on, but what are sort of two or three tangible tips that, that people could get away from? Is it, is it standing in front of the mirror in the bathroom every morning going, you know, I'm going to achieve this the sort of visualization or is, is, is there a bit more to it? Yeah. So a, a couple of things. Uh, the first is to keep it real. If you're lying to yourself, uh, then it's not going to stick. So that, that, that would be the, the first point. The second is I've actually found journaling as a tool really helpful. Um, getting uh, some of the deeper stuff out, um, how I'm feeling, what I'm thinking, if there's something going on in my life, especially around money, um, 
you know, it's it's a lot easier to get that out, um, you know, through through a pen on page than just kind of thinking about it and processing it internally. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll often start with, you know, uh, how I feel is, and then I'll just keep writing. Um, and that will download a lot of the internal stuff uh, that's, yeah. That's really interesting because I, I don't journal. I'm very bad at all of that stuff. But the only time I do it is when I'm long distance hiking. And, and you know, when I, I, I might be hiking for you know, six weeks just with a, with a pack on and walking. And I do a very similar thing because I, I do video blogs along the way. And it's like I'm confessing to the camera, you know, there about, you go. What, about what's going on, uh, and, you know, really what I'm feeling, what I'm hoping to achieve, those sort of things. So that's, that's kind of journaling, isn't it? I, I, I get it now the way you explain it. It is, and it almost doesn't matter what format it takes. You know, mm-hmm. as long as you're you're taking those internal thoughts and feelings and 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 downloading those externally, it it gets it. You know, I guess out of out of you, uh, especially if, if it's negative, um, and then you can start to focus on what is going to be positive and supportive and that sort of thing. And that that's the second part of the the journaling that I have done. Is great. Okay, well, what are the top 50 or 100 reasons why having and keeping money is good for me is good for my family is good for you know my my world and and those i'm able to help Uh, and so that starts cementing why it's actually good uh, to have money and starts replacing those old beliefs with the the new more positive more supportive beliefs which it took me a lot of money and I've, I've invested hundreds of thousands of dollars in coaching and trainings and all sorts <laughs> of things. A lot. <laughs> yes. A lot hasn't worked, but uh, yeah. yeah, there's that like, essentially if I can condense it down into those, into those mm. couple of simple things, uh, you know, anyone can apply them and they're so simple, but they have to be done consistently. You, you don't get a, you don't get to reprogram yourself in just one session of journaling. You do need to do it, you know, every day. Um, and, and I still do it now um, and I, f- I find it extremely useful. Uh, so yeah, if, if you are looking for uh, a, I guess, a change, I really believe that it comes from your identity. And in order to change your identity, you need to, I, I guess, uh, first of all, recognize where you are, where you're at, uh, and then make those steps to focus on who you'd like to become. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. That's, that's cool. I, I just, while you're speaking there, I'm thinking, you know, something a lot of people might've heard of also is imposter syndrome, which, which a lot of business owners and particularly startup business owners get. It's kind of linked, isn't it? it I mean, that's, that's a key element of, of the mindset where people think they're not worthy of being successful and not worthy of, of being wealthy. Absolutely. And look, a lot of imposter syndrome, at least what I've experienced in my life, has come from lying to myself. You know, I am good at this when I'm not, or, you know, I I am great with money when I'm clearly not, or I am this when I'm clearly not. And so the less of that I do, when I, I am in situations like in a sales, like in a sales presentation in you know, a, you know, new, a, new, a, new a new industry that I, that I don't know much about, about or whatever it is, and you do, you know, like because there, there are times on the entrepreneurial journey when you do need to fake it till you make it, I suppose. Mm-hmm. But you obviously want to limit those. Um, obviously, putting your best foot forward is always helpful and that kind of thing. But yeah, making sure that you know you're not consistently lying to yourself because that will, I guess, destroy your your internal self worth and your internal value and and uh, your view of yourself. So, yeah, it's it's very much a case of you know only stepping into that fake fake it till you make it when you have to and realize that you know it is a season and look out you know I am going to put my my best foot forward here, uh, but not not I guess living in that uh, which I can I can say that I did for a, for a long time you know I had you know the cars or the house or the you know whatever it is, you know there was a lot of debt behind that there was a lot of stuff you know and it was, it was <laughs> mm, absolutely so I, I guess I'm getting raw I guess I'm you know I'm getting real but um yeah like what what I found is being authentic and being genuine you just can draw so much more happiness from that and be, being happy with where you're at right now rather than having the stuff to impress the people uh, which is yeah. ulti- ultimately empty ultimately like a big void yeah that's true and and you know whilst we're talking about sort of mindset here and, and the words that are coming to mind for me are money mindset you know and, and a lot of people kind of particularly new entrepreneurs feel very uncomfortable about the money side of things you know and oh I'm, am I appearing greedy and all that kind of stuff you know, I, I think it's a question of getting real, you know, no, nobody's telling you you have to make lots of money and spend it all on yourself. 
you know. Um, a lot of the money I make in my businesses doesn't go on me at all. <laughs> it goes to charities and all kinds of things. So uh, I think you mentioned, you know, right at the beginning there that, um, you know, earning well can kind of improve the world around you as well. So, you know, that's a bit of a mindset issue too. Yeah. And uh, someone said to me uh, fairly early on, but I didn't get it until much later. Uh, if you have a lot of resources, you can do a lot of good. Uh, and, and so it doesn't necessarily have to be on your own car, on your own boat, on your own house, you know, that, that kind of thing. Oh, someone else a car. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Some, someone who needs it, you know, someone who, you know, yeah. people who, who can't feed themselves. And, and there's plenty of those in, in, you know, pick any third world country in the world. You know, there's a lot of good that can be done if you're in a position of wealth uh, and are able to help others. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Now I'll, I'll give you a pause for breath because I'm going to ask you for one really great tip, money uh, mindset tip or a resource that we can share below or something, uh, because we've talked about quite a bit there and people might be a little bit confused. So number one tip that, that people could actually do right now, what would it be? Pick up a pen and paper and start journaling. Journal out your negative thoughts and journal in where you want to be around money. Uh, and if you do that consistently, you will end up where you want to end up around your own finances. Sounds good. So thank you very much for joining us, Ryan. Uh, people might want to sort of reach out to you and learn a little bit more about what you do. We really haven't talked about that because you run a company called Algonics. Maybe we'll put a link down below to, uh, you know, your LinkedIn profile and your company and things like that as well. But thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Robert. It's been a pleasure.